Hey guys. All right. Today we are going to take a look at fungi. It's the last of the uh, most common microorganisms that you guys are going to see as we, you know, after we finish up with this chapter, we'll then start moving into, um, you know, ways that we attack microorganisms. We'll take a look at then what happens when microorganisms are pathogenic. Remember, we talked about the term pathogen and it's going to cause infections and how there are, you know, scientists and pathologists and epidemiologists. And we're going to talk about those specific terms. We'll talk about how they're working to try and eliminate these pathogens and these diseases that they cause. And we'll talk about how we diagnose and how we then treat certain ones. So we'll build into that as we finish up with the rest of the class. So let's go ahead and let's talk about fungi then. So let me go ahead and get my PowerPoint going here. All right, guys. So this chapter, real short and sweet, just like we've seen before, just as we introduce these organisms. Uh, fungi um, is one that, again, in, you, in your all's case, you, you may come across fungal infections. Yeast is a big common one, yeast infections. We know, again, there's good yeast that helps bread rise, that helps beer and wine ferment. Um, we know that there are, you know, there's um, really great mushrooms. And when we think of fungi, we oftentimes think of the mushrooms that grow uh, outside. We think mushrooms that we can eat on our pizza, makes it delicious. Um, some people don't like mushrooms, I guess. Uh, but there's also bad mushrooms. There's mushrooms that if we eat, we could become very sick. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. It's just really your, your common types of fungi and where we may see those. So again, that's what we're going to take a look at, fungi. Um, some common characteristics with fungi, and I'll show you what I mean by that. How fungi are classified, and then again, the medical significance to fungi. So again, why that's going to be important to you. So the study of fungi itself, as again, we're talking again, broad terms, the study of just microorganisms in general, microorganisms in general is called microbiology, right? Um, but we can shorten that. There are studies of just bacteria and studies of people who just study viruses. It's called virology. And there's the study of just fungi, and that's going to be called mycology. So study, study, I'm um, sorry, people who study that fungi, so scientists who focus on just fungi are called mycologists. So when you see that myco or mycology. That's what they're focusing on there. Fungi, just like a lot of our microorganisms, are found virtually everywhere. We can find fungi pretty much everywhere. So again, remember though, sometimes when you hear the word fungi or fungus, if we're looking at just one, uh, we oftentimes think, ew, gross, fungi, that's not good. Some are bad, but again, some are beneficial, and that's what we're going to take a look at. Fungi represent a very diverse group of eukaryotic organisms, so they fall into that eukaryotic crowd that we talked about. Remember, eukaryotic very similar to human beings, means that we are made up of cells, but specifically those cells being eukaryotic um, means that they have um, membrane bound organelles. So it means they have different parts in it that have different roles. They're not all just, you know, all of our information isn't just free floating in cytoplasm. We have, you know, organelles that kind of are separated throughout the cell. So this is going to include your most common types that we will talk about today, yeast, as I mentioned at the beginning. Molds, you may see that spelled two ways. Some of the common ways that you guys see that is M-O-L-D. M-O-U-L-D is the same thing. So just a heads up on that. And then fleshy fungi. So for example, mushrooms. Fungi are considered the garbage disposers of nature. If you remember at the very beginning of class, in chapter one, we talked about um, how uh, a lot of microorganisms are really important in the role of decomposition. They help to decompose dead organisms, such as like a, a tree that has fallen in a forest as it starts to decompose, fungi may start to grow on that log. And what it's doing is it's helping to eat and dispose of it and then provide nutrients for the soil, which is going to help the other plants grow, which is going to help in our oxygen cycle, our nitrogen cycle, and so on. If you guys remember when we talked about that. So fungi is going to have a big role in that, uh, in that process. Fungi are not plants. Oftentimes people think, well, they grow in soil. Um, they are not photosynthetic, which means that they do not take in nutrients from soil. They don't take in sunlight and provide oxygen for our atmosphere. Instead, they have another job. Again, their role is to be these garbage disposers, as we, as we say. Um, so they're not to be confused with plants. 
So some fungi characteristics, and this is kind of a, a big one that you would see in most of your fungi um, that we're, we're seeing in these pictures here. One, a fungal cell wall is gonna, is gonna contain what's called a polysaccharide. It's just a uh, kind of a, a part of that is called chitin. So if you hear that chitin, it's part of the cell wall around all of the cells within the fungi. Some fungi can be unicellular, meaning they only have one cell, while others have cells that grow into these filaments, and this is a big, a big one, I want you guys to be familiar with this term, called hyphae. Hyphae are these little filaments that are growing, as you can see here, and you can see they grow and they look, sometimes they look a little bit different. Uh, and you don't have to know the difference in the different hyphae. I found this picture and thought it was just kind of helpful to see that. And this picture I found online, so this one is not in your textbook, but it really shows you as we think about fungi, we commonly think again of mushrooms. If we were to break open that mushroom, I know this looks like roots and it looks like that's what's growing into the soil. Um, but remember, they're not plants. So not very similar to how that plant grows. Instead, this is that hyphae. Um, we have hyphae throughout the, the fungi itself. Um, and then we have underground hyphae that will kind of maybe act as roots. It helps to adhere it to the ground in this, in this case in with a mushroom, but we're gonna see hyphae in some, in some molds as well. Um, this specific mushroom is showing how spores are gonna be what helps it to reproduce. Uh, some organisms produce spores, kind of like little seeds that are gonna help that to then you know, grow elsewhere. Um, but that's the main purpose of this is to show you where we would find that hyphae in a, in a mushroom, for instance. Here, this is what we're gonna take a look at when we see mold. And we'll, see, we'll talk about this a little bit later when we, when we talk specifically about mold. Yeast typically does not contain hyphae. You can't, you know, it's typically not gonna be found as this is yeast and mold growing in a Petri dish in a laboratory. Um, so you're seeing the mold kind of, I mean, I'm sorry, not mold, but yeast sometimes is similar to, um, almost looks like bacteria. If we were to look at it under a microscope, it, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, but typically you're seeing it like cocci, grows round and kind of sphere shaped. Uh, whereas mold, you can definitely see that hyphae and mold is gonna contain two hyphae that I do want you guys to know the difference uh, between, and this is pretty easy to remember, um, but we have the vegetative hyphae that's gonna grow underneath and then what's called aerial hyphae, which grows on top. And we'll talk a little bit more about that with mold when we, when we see that. This right now, I'm just kind of pointing out what hyphae is. So I'd be familiar with that term. You're also going to see it shows you the mycelium, which is when hyphae kind of grows uh, in uh, these separate filaments and grows kind of looks like roots. Don't worry about that. The main focus here is looking at the term hyphae. And there's just some more pictures for you, just various types of fungi. There's penicillium, that's the specific type of fungi that helps uh, create are the medication penicillin, or penicillin, I can't talk today. Uh, but you can see the different uh, views of what hyphae looks like on these different microorganisms here, these different fungi. All right, so let's talk about our three common uh, fungi classifications. We're gonna take a look at yeast, and then we'll look at molds, and then we'll see fleshy fungi like mushrooms. Yeasts are found in soil and water, but also on the skins of different fruits and vegetables. Yeast, as we've talked about before, have been used for centuries to make wine and beer. Um, so some of you guys talked about this in your discussion when we talked um, in, in week one, when I asked you guys to name a microorganism and what, it's, what it does. Uh, so a lot of you guys talked about bread making and how yeast is used in baking to help that bread rise. And specifically, that's what we're looking at here, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is the yeast that's used in baking. Candidata albacans, however, is the yeast that we commonly find in infections that we isolate from hum human clinical specimens that's gonna sometimes you know, lead to those infections. So it's also the fungus that's most frequently isolated from human specimens when people are you know, experiencing yeast infections of some sort. So again, we're seeing this type of fungi, we see benefits and then we see different uh, a different, a totally different type of yeast that is going to be the pathogenic type. Um, and as I mentioned before, yeast colonies sometimes can be difficult to distinguish from bacterial colonies 
simply because they look very similar to cock's eye as far as their appearance. They look, you know, round shaped. Uh, so a simple wet mount is what's used in a laboratory to differentiate the two, because then we can see yeasts are typically going to be larger, as I, as I talked to you guys about that before, when we're looking at that picture of the Petri dish, they're usually a little bit more oval shaped than they are round shaped. Um, yeasts are often observed in the process of budding. It's a type of replication, as that's how they're going to, uh, you know, replicate themselves and create more of themselves. They use budding, and bacteria does not use that type of replication process of budding. So just FYI on that, as far as the small differences between yeast and bacteria there. So here is that isolation I, I mentioned to you guys that Canadia uh, bacchans is the most common type of yeast that's going to be isolated from human clinical specimens. And this is just what that looks like growing on a blood, blood agar plate in a laboratory. Okay, so just a few things I wanted you guys to be familiar with with the yeast. Another type of fungi is going to be called molds. And again, can be spelled two different ways, molds and molds. Um, we oftentimes, when we think of mold, I know the most common thing I think about when I think of mold is when I open up my refrigerator and there's something in the very back that I haven't looked at in a very long time. And I go to grab it and it's been there for maybe a month and I open it up and there's mold on top of it when something is going bad. Uh, so that's often where we see mold and that's going to be a very common way that we see mold. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. So molds are oftentimes seen in water and soil and then growing on food, growing on food that has gone bad. Um, so we look at that and we go, gross, molds are terrible um, because it is. It just means that that food has gone bad and we definitely don't want to eat that because it would make us very sick. Um, but here's where we're seeing on that food that has gone bad, um, that aerial and vegetative hyphae. So let's say that the mold that I've picked out of my refrigerator is on a sandwich. So on that, on a piece of bread, we see mold on top. It's usually kind of a greenish bluish color. Um, but there's actually, that's what we're looking at when we, when we talk about aerial hyphae. So again, we talked about that earlier that they produce those cytoplasmic filaments called hyphae. The aerial hyphae is what's what we're seeing on the surface of whatever that mold is growing on. Oops, I didn't mean to click through that here. Sorry about that guys. Okay, uh, on that surface. But if we were to cut open that bread and look at it from the side, we would not only see that on top of the bread is that aerial hyphae, but we would see the vegetative hyphae growing into that piece of bread. So that's what's growing beneath the surface. So that's the difference between that aerial and vegetative hyphae. So molds very similar to how um, mushrooms reproduce as we saw in that picture of spores. Reproduction is by that spore formation. Uh, either takes place sexually, which means, you know, getting together with more molds um, or asexually, meaning that it can reproduce on its own. Um, and that takes place on that aerial hyphae. Okay. Molds also have a great commercial import importance though. So again, we talked about bad mold is what's growing on, on fruits and vegetables or that sandwich that I was talking to you guys about. So again, that means that that sandwich has to be thrown away because it would make us very sick. But again, remember there's different types of molds that are very beneficial, such as penicillium. I showed you guys that picture. That is the a really common one is that is the specific type of mold that helped us to discover penicillin. So it's used in antibiotics. And there are other molds that are used to, to help with that. Um, some molds are used to produce large quantities of enzymes that are gonna be used commercially. And also the flavors of cheeses like blue cheese. I think I mentioned that in week one, we talked about some beneficial uh, fungi. Blue cheese is flavored by mold. It even looks like it has mold all over it and other types of cheese. These are all due to the fact that molds grow on them, but they're a specific type of mold that does not make us sick. So that's the mold we can eat as opposed to mold that we cannot eat. So there's a lot of benefits to certain types of mold. And again, it just has to be these specific types. And then fleshy fungi. So fleshy fungi is what we think of when we think of mushrooms. So mushrooms, toadstools, puffballs, and bracket fungi all are, uh, fall into that fleshy fungi. So these as well consist of a network of filaments or strands. The mycelium, it's that which is that hyphae, 
that grows in the soil or on a, a rotting log. The fruiting body that grows above the ground and forms is going to release those spores as we saw from that picture. And again, remember some mushrooms are edible and some are very toxic. So we don't want to just be walking around. We go around in a forest and we see some mushrooms growing. I wouldn't pick it up and eat it. You want to um, be specific with the type of fleshy fungi that you can't eat. Okay, so those are our three types of fungi that we commonly see, yeast, molds, and fleshy fungi. And there's different types in each category, but those are your three common types of fungi. Um, fungi um, has a very important medical significance. A variety of fungi, including yeast, molds, and some fleshy fungi, or are of medical, veterinary, and agricultural importance because of the diseases that they cause. So again, we, we briefly mentioned some, and we know that you know, we have either experienced or we've had patients or, or our family members or somebody that has experienced a yeast infection or perhaps um, has eaten something that they didn't like and it could have been something, you know, that was moldy. Um, so, you know, we see that because of the diseases that they cause, not just in humans, but also in animals and plants. So the infectious diseases of humans and animals that are caused by molds are called mycoses. So again, we talked about how the study of fungi um, is called mycology. Well, disease is caused by, and it should really specifically be fungi, not necessarily molds, um, is called mycoses. So fungal infections can be, so these mycoses, so specifically, so that's kind of a typo, it should say caused by fungi. Uh, so these fungal infections, these mycoses themselves, can be categorized, categorized in four different ways, leading from um, really not as severe to the most severe. And that is going to be, again, based on how it spreads. Uh, so superficial, and hopefully these terms are, that term is uh, familiar from anatomy, cutaneous, subcutaneous, and systemic. So let's talk about each of those. So Superficial mycoses are fungal infections of the outermost areas of the body. So that would include hair, nails, your epidermis. So again, remember that's just the surface of the body. So it's just, a, it's just an infection just on the surface. So it might be easily uh, easier to treat than some that are gonna infect other areas. Whereas now what happens is we're getting a little bit deeper. So a cutaneous mycosis, or mycoses, these are going to be fungal infections of the living layer, so getting down into the dermis. So going from the epidermis, remember that was the outermost layer of skin, but now we're getting into the layer underneath, and it's called the living layer because that's what is going to contain all of your skin's nerve endings, blood vessels, hair follicles, all, you know, all of those things. So this can, make, this can be a little bit more severe than those superficial infections. So a group of molds collectively referred to as uh, dermatophytes is going to cause tinea, which is ringworm. Ringworm have nothing to do with worms. So for those of you guys who have ever either experienced ringworm or know somebody who has, it has nothing to do with worms. It's just the way that it kind of forms, um, you know, a ring and, and how it appears on the skin, but it has nothing to do with that. It is based on molds. And then again, the yeast, uh, Candida albacans, is also going to be a cutaneous oral and vaginal infection. Some people get yeast infections within the mouth, and uh, some people get vaginal yeast infections, and both are caused by that specific yeast. And again, it is a cutaneous infection. Okay. Subcutaneous, as we know, the layer underneath our dermis is called our subcutaneous layer. Uh, mostly made up of our fat tissue, and then right before the muscle layer of our skin, I mean, of our skin, <laughs> the muscle layer of our body. So your subcutaneous and then your systemic mycoses are going to be more severe types of fungal infections. Subcutaneous mycoses are going to be fungal infections of the dermis as well as the underlying tissue. So again, affecting now the subcutaneous layer. If anybody's heard of Madura foot, that's one that's going to affect those underlying layers. Not that you have to be, again, real specific with that, just no subcutaneous is now getting a little bit deeper. And then now we're getting more, much more severe, now affecting, if you think of the term systemic, 
we're now affecting the system. So systemic mycoses are gonna be fungal infections of the internal organs of the body. So what happens here, spores of some of those pathogenic fungi may be inhaled with dust from either contaminated soil, dried bird or bat feces, and then they also may enter in through the wounds of hands and feet. And again, that's gonna be your opening into your body and that's how they get into your system. So again, those four different mycoses, uh, superficial is only the outside, cutaneous is gonna affect the dermis layer underneath, subcutaneous affecting the dermis and the underlying tissues, and then systemic, your most severe is gonna be then affecting the internal structures of the body. Okay, and that's all I wanted to show you guys for chapter five. As I told you guys, just really short and sweet chapter, just wanted you guys to really understand the different types of fungi and again, why they're important to you guys. And so knowing the different types of mycoses is important. All right, guys, if you guys have any questions at all, let me know.